We're doing top 10 mob movies with my special guest, the compadres podcast host and actor, Joe Rosati. How you guys doing today? We're going we're gonna to drop some knowledge to you all and put out our list and see if you agree or disagree. And it's going to be a fun time. Hell yeah. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Patelson Show. Like we said, we're doing the top 10 mob movies with my special guest, Joe Rosati. I've known you, get this, for 18 yes, years. Yes, yes, 18 years. 18, 18 years. years. We've been friends and uh, worked in the trenches together as bartenders yes, together. We have. <laughs> yes, we have. And uh, even became, you know, still friends with our Raider Bronco rivalry. He's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's one of my best friends, and he's a Raiders fan. I'm a Broncos fan. It is, it is we are proof. That healing can exist, okay? Yes, okay. exactly. And uh, not only that, but, you know, this this list that we've gone through, we used to go through movies all the time we worked together. Yeah, we did. And, big uh, movie house. Yeah, so this was uh, really, to me, it, it's way overdue. It we, is. It, no, it, it's you were my first thought when I thought yeah. we would do mob movies. Yeah, I love this. So start us off. Tell me what, well, first of all, as far as mob movies, we were talking about right. this, on whether or not they were mafia yeah. movies, Italian, or whatever. So the term mob uh, is is going to be, be really general. general, because it could go into the gangster part, too. Yes. You know, gangster sides of it, you know, we're going to hit every one of them, and the list is very, very, uh, it's going to be eclectic for both of us, and I'm you looking very, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to number 10. Okay. Give me number 10. You go first. I'm going to go with Gotti, and when I say Gotti... I'm not talking about the one that was just released. I'm talking about the one with the Montesante. The HBO you know, movie Gotti. When HBO did their own movies at that time, you know, because now, you know, they they still do it, but they were the ones that really kind of, as a network, started it. Amanda Sante was unbelievable in that role. He, he was so good in... Watch that one, not the new one. Seriously, don't watch. Well, okay, you can watch the John Travolta <laughs> movie. I've seen it. I it's got a lot that. of issues. But uh, Armando Sante's Gotti... Uh, with uh, who plays Sammy the Bull? I can't remember. Oh uh, no! Um, we'll put his face right. Yeah, here. he's right here. Yeah, <laughs> he's great. And I can't remember his yeah, name. Yeah, I can't right remember his name. But yeah. uh, he's great, and it's the entire cast of The Sopranos. Yeah, basically, it's before it's The Sopranos, Sopranos came became out. The Sopranos. Yes. Oh, that true. is a great pick. Yeah, that is a great yeah, pick. Yeah. All right, my number ten. I decided uh, there was some movies that I was going to put on there, and I bumped one of them recently when I decided I'm going to put a documentary on. I put a mob documentary, and I almost put Fear City from Netflix. That's a three-part documentary series about the mafia. That's great. But this one discusses, it's from 2014, and discusses one of Massachusetts' favorite villains. This is Whitey Bulger's documentary called Whitey. 2014. Yes, Whitey. and I, you know what? There's, there's a lot more about Whitey than people think. You have that documentary, oh, you yeah. have Black Mass, and then Departed 2 was basically based off of him. Yes. So, Whitey Bulge is a fascinating story and a fascinating, horrible person, but yes. it is a great documentary. Highly recommend And he did hide Whitey. for 20 years in down the street in Santa Monica, which I thought was interesting when we found him. Exactly. <laughs> Number uh, nine. American Me. American Me. Yeah. Oh, I love American Me. Um... I what I found fun what I found funny about this is, you know, Edward James almost used to come in to used establish to come into the place where we, we used to we work, work and he's the nicest guy. Nicest guy and I remember talking to him about it and I've seen that movie a lot and you know William Forsythe too. I ran at him a couple times and talked to him. I mean, he was William Forsythe is, 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 is the guy we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, he, he plays Sammy the Bull. That was that was okay. Yeah, okay. But in American Me, he plays JD. Yeah. And he was just so good in that role. American Me's a great, That's a great a film. Great, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll put that under mob movie as well. Yeah. That's a great film. Yes, it was. American Me. All right, number nine for me. Number nine for me uh, is not my favorite Martin Scorsese movie, but it's up there, and we just mentioned it. It's the, from 2006, The Departed. The Departed stars Jack Nicholson and Mark Wahlberg, and Matt Damon and right. Leonardo DiCaprio yes. yeah. and 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 Alec Baldwin. It is a blockbuster cast. It is riveting. You don't know what's going to happen to the end. I won't spoil it for you, but watch The Departed. I love The Departed. And you know what? It's Jack. Yeah, Jack was amazing. And um, actually, that was going to be next on my list. So I'm going to have to do a little. 
curveball. You didn't have it, curveball. Let me know what it was. It, it, it was, it was number, eight, number eight. Number eight was going to be the part. Number eight is the depart for me. So okay, so yeah, this so we're on the awesome. yeah. So yes. So I mean that movie. I watched it the other day. As a matter of fact, I just Jack was so good in it. They all were. Yeah, and they weird. they have lines in that movies that we say all the time, and it's just it's just fun. It's just fun to watch. It's a great. We're gonna time. smoke. We're gonna smoke. But the guys who are smoking, <laughs> <Tell them not. laughs> <laughs> Alec Baldwin has the best lines. He does through the whole movie. <laughs> All right, your number eight is the Departed. My yes, is the Departed. Okay. So my uh, so my number eight is from two thousand seven, and surprised me because it is a serious acting chops movie and not a shoot 'em up gangster right, movie. Right, right, right. But I have to go with uh, two thousand. Did I say seven? Yeah. Yeah, 2007, with Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe telling the story of Frank Lucas, American Gangster. That's a great film. That's and a it's great on my movie. list. And actually, I have some, you'll see my list. We're going to get there. It's we'll, a little, we'll get there. We'll get there. there. Yeah, it's, American uh, Gangster is a good, dramatic portrayal of uh, showing really the nuts and bolts of being a mob family. Yeah, basically. Showing how the, how the how drugs me, Yes, and he brought in his whole family, his actual family, to help his him out. family. I mean, it's, you know, that movie grew on me over the years, so it was a fabulous film. In interviews uh, with the actual Frank Lucas, Denzel Washington talked with him and said, could he go back and change anything? And Frank Lucas said, no, not one thing. Right. He would do everything exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, uh, my, American Gangster. My number seven is the original Carlito Sway. Ah. Uh. With Pacino, Louis Guzman's in that as well. Um, it's and Sean it, Penn. It's Sean Penn. I forgot. Yeah, well, his cocaine habit through the with whole the time. great hair. Yeah, Let's get the great best hair. hair. And uh, the thing about that is, this movie is it is a gangster film, and a lot of shit goes down. But it's also the love story, and him trying to get out, and yeah. then when when it happens. You know, if anybody hasn't seen the original, you need to watch that movie. Carlito's way is great. Yes. Carlito gets out of prison, I believe, yes. and wants to start his life but anew. And and he's, not. He, he's, he, not. he's pulled right back into to the life he wanted to get rid of. Uh, Penelope Ann Cruz? Yes. Is love interest? I believe so. And also, um, it's here. the guy that plays that kills him at the end. This is the guy that kills him at the end. Yeah. John Leguizamo's in it, but he doesn't yeah. kill him. That's who it was. Benny from the Blanc kills him? Yeah, yeah. Benny from the Blanc and Smith, yeah. That's who, yeah. Sorry, spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah, 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 yeah. Benny from John, the Blanc. Yeah. The Blanc or the Bronx? It was, it was, it was Blanco. Benny from the Blanc. Oh, yeah. Okay. Benny Blanco, I believe, from the Bronx. Oh, yeah. Carlito's Way. If you haven't seen that in a while, watch that. That's a great pick. That's number seven? Yes. Number seven for me. We're going across the pond. Wow. We're going across the pond to England on this wow. one for 2000 because there's lots of nefarious activities wow. in the brilliant Guy Ritchie Snatch. Wow. Snatch is my mob movie, which has the mafia, people who are hiding from the mafia, people who want to make money from the mafia, uh, thieves, villains, assassins. It's just one big mix. Snatch is a brilliant movie. I love Snatch. And the dialects are amazing. Yes, you Brad Pitt is the pipe. You can't even understand them sometimes. That was a fun film, too, to watch. I, 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 that did not make my list, but I like the curveball you threw. Exactly. I appreciate Jason that. Jason Statham. Bro, the Germans tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, they, why they call him Boris the Bullet Dodger? Yeah. Because he dodges, dodges bullets. bullets heavy. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Oh, and who was that? That's uh, Dennis Farina? Yes, Dennis Farina. Dennis Farina. Oh, so good. Oh, and I just realized that Get Shorty's not on my list, and I don't know if that could be a mob movie, but I love Get Shorty. Well, you know, Midnight Run's not on mine either, but that kind of Oh, was, Midnight you know, Run. Because, I mean, that, that, I, that one scene I just love, I said it the other day. Am I talking to more on one or more on two? Get more on two on the phone. <laughs> Dennis Farina was so cold Dennis in that movie. Farina. He was just amazing. He was oh, amazing. God. So, uh, from number, number, number six... six John Singleton's Boys in the Hood. Yeah. Um, you know, when we look at films and they break, you know, times and everything, Godfather did so much. I believe Boys in the Hood took everything to the next level after that, too. That film. Everything changed after it, Boys in yeah, the Hood. Yeah, I mean, that, that film was very well made. It was well written and it was a lot of tragedy and everything else, but it was, you know, Cube. He was amazing in it. Ice Cube did a great job. Ice Cube, and so did uh, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba Gooding Jr. And actually, true story, I remember Ricky, 
if anybody knows this movie, if you haven't watched Boys in the Hood, I don't even know what to say to you. But Ricky in that movie, who the guy that played young, the younger Ricky, he was my Uber driver twice when he drove me to set one time. It was the funniest thing ever. L.A. That's L.A. Living, that's living in L.A. right there. He was a good man. Uber driver. Yeah. Boys in the Hood. That's Boys, a great pick. Yeah, it is. That's a good pick. Yes. All right. Number six. 1995. There's so, mo there's, there's so many bodies in the desert. You got to have the hole dug before you go out there. It's Casino. Now, Robert De Niro's on my list a lot. Right. Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, and Sharon Stone, James Woods, Don Rickles. Casino is one of my favorite movies where they actually show how money was made in Las Vegas. Right. We always heard the mob runs Las Vegas. Yeah, no movie shows you showed anything. It. Yeah. And Casino was the first movie that showed that, and it came up. Oh, Casino's a great film. That's a great mob movie. Lots of mob actors, and it's all Martin Scorsese, who's now on my list twice. So far, since it's mob movies after good, all. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we all knew the best director of mob movies is Scorsese. I mean... Martin Scorsese. Yeah. He's fantastic. That was number six. We'll be back after a short break to continue with mob movies. <laughs> We're back after a short break. <laughs> and now it's going to be five to one. <laughs> Best mob movies. Yes. Favorite mob movies. Yes. Our favorite. Our favorite. Not the best. I'm not going to say any kind of grand thing what we're talking and about. And everybody's so, got a list. Top. Everybody's got an opinion. And there's no, there's not a debate. This is my list and your list. Every time I do a top ten list, someone yep. says, how come you didn't mention this well, movie? And I go, oh, wow. wow. Yes, that's a great movie. And please do. In the comments, right. when we miss something, point it out. Because, yeah, there are tons of movies. But back to the list. Joe, give us number five. The Untouchables. Oh, hell. I'll tell you what, that movie with, you know, you had Andy Garcia, you had uh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. God, Sean Connery. Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, and then De Niro as right. Capone. And there's some really, and I, who, I don't know who plays Frank Nitti in that, but he he was good too. I don't know, I can't remember the actor's His name. His name is this, and he's right here. <laughs> I wish it was. That's how we do it here. <laughs> That's why editing exists. So yeah, I do it, this. there you go. There you, <laughs> there you go. Well, he was great, and I think the real Frank Nitti didn't die that way. But yeah, oh but my God. God. it was just a great film. I mean, I still remember the whole thing when Capone, you know, De Niro hits a guy over the baseball bat in the meeting. You know? The 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 uh, the opening crawl sequence for the credits. The the man that did the score is Ennio Marconi, who did the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, right. and the Hateful Eight. And the very beginning of the Untouchables has a great score. Actually, the, the score is great throughout the entire movie. Right. And I love that. Oh, it's so it's so good. Didn't David Mamet write the screenplay? I believe. Yes, he did. Yes, he yes he did. I, I mean, no I, wonder it's. Great. No, I remember that because I was in college at the time, and I was learning a lot about Mamet and his work. And then when I would go deeper, I was like, oh. I was like damn, he wrote The Untouchables? I mean, it's, it's so, a great... It's, it's just entertaining. A, yes, it's a great film. It's if you really haven't seen it, I don't know what to... Again, if you haven't seen some of my list and you know me, I mean, I know you know Tommy, but you, you if you know... People know me as well. I don't know what to say to you. This happens on KO's list, too. He always like, if you don't know this movie, I don't want to know your face. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know about the face. I'm just like, some stuff you got to see. And I'm going to go into deeper later down the list about something. The Untouchables. That's fantastic. Uh, we can skip to yours because my number five is The Untouchables. <laughs> Great minds think alike, That's no matter who they are. Together for 18 years. <laughs> yeah, my there you go. The Untouchables. All right, number four. All right, now, Tommy already mentioned this film. And it's uh, pretty high on my list, obviously. American Gangster. American Gangster. And I and I remember when I first watched it, I was like, eh. Then I watched it again, and, eh. and then I go, it's well written. It's one of those movies that it's, it does take a couple to get, to get you. To get, to get you. And I, after watching it, it's a great film, and it's a great story. And I think now, too, with the Godfather of Harlem that's out now, Forrest Whitaker. Instead of Forrest Whitaker's playing Bumpy Johnson again, it's just to show that how important this man was, what he did in these times, and, you know, that... If you haven't seen that movie either, you need to watch it. It's in great. American Gangster, uh, Frank Lucas plays the driver of, of Bumpy Bump Johnson, Johnson, who's a famous gangster yeah. uh, in, from Harlem, yeah. who has been played by Lawrence Fishburne three times. Yep. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne and Bumpy Johnson. American Gangster. Yeah. So great. Number yeah. four. Okay. Number three. No, I'm sorry. Number four for me. Number four for me has already been mentioned. It is HBO's Gotti. 
And we already talked about HBO's Gotti. I put that number wow, four. Wow, you put the wow. I really love it. I can put it on anytime and watch that. I find it to be a, just incredibly entertaining all the way to the end. It's, yeah, I think it's one of my favorite made for HBO movies. I'd have to see a list, but right. HBO's Gotti. Yeah, and Armand DeSante is the best performance of John Gotti ever. Ever. I mean, he looks like him. He talked about him. I mean, he was an American gangster, too. Also, Michael Francis uh, has said on his uh, YouTube channel and podcast, it's his favorite mob movie as well, or favorite portrayal where yeah. it shows. And, uh, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, no, I can't. Anthony Quinn is in it. Anthony Quinn is in it, and like, like you want to talk about a big gun? Anthony Quinn plays Neil De La Croce, and uh, fantastic. Anthony Quinn, that, that always rings a bell. Oh. You know why, right? Remember, Which, that's who got that role in uh, Boardwalk Empire that auditioned for in this apartment. That's true. He yeah, entered. <laughs> and the casting director wrote back, she loved it everywhere, and I was talking to Tommy, and I was like, yeah. And then we saw who's casting, it was Anthony fucking Quinn. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> okay, Bye. good, cool. Fine. <laughs> nice to be in that company, yeah. though. Yeah. Nice right. to be in the right. company, right. Anthony right. Quinn. Right. Jeez. All right, that was number four. Yeah. Number three. Go get your fucking shine box. Really? Good fellas. Good fellas. Good, good fellas. From I, 1990, Martin Scorsese. I, I tell you what, you know... Another Scorsese film, but that one was just the cast. The cast was so good. Oh. I mean, it, you know, Lorraine Bra Laurent Bracco, De Niro. Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Frank Vinson. I can say that is Ray Liotta's best role. I think he'd agree with it if he was still with yes, the rest uh, of yes, Ray Liotta. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and Lorraine Bracco, too. Yeah. Well, maybe Sopranos. Sopranos. Sopranos, but, but she's great a fabulous job. Why did you do that, Karen? Yeah. It would have never found it. it. Right. <laughs> oh, good fellas. Telling the tale of Henry Hill. And now, now that we're on that, let him see your Servino impression. Come on. Bali's impression. Come on. You want me to be one? It would, it would, it would, it would not even fair. Would you, uh, uh, all right. You were in the joint. I, uh, I, I'll try and help you out. I'll try and help you out. He's been doing this for 15 years, and I still laugh every I've, time he does it. I, I love no it. No one does I a Paul it. Servino. I do a Paul Servino. He does a great Paul Servino. We're not even, we're not even fair. <laughs> oh, yeah, good fellas. That's a great pick. That's a great pick. All right, number three. Number three comes from 1972, and it is most people's number one. I can say that without a doubt. He'll make you an offer he can't refuse. It is The Godfather. Directed by Francis Ford Coppola, starring Marlon Brando and Al Pacino, James Caan, Robert Duvall, Talia Shire, going on and on and on and on. It is still, The Godfather is just a brilliant movie it, to this day. And for our buddy uh, Hammy, our buddy Eric loves yeah. this movie to fall asleep to because he can't stay awake while watching it. Don't start this late at night. It's a big talking movie. Uh, it is. The Godfather. Yeah, it it's is. epic and is number, th number three on my list. So, number two, I want Scorsese back to back, Casino. Casino. And he already mentioned it, but again, that film, it was more about the gambling and the ma and it was just so well done. And again, you had Pacino, Frank Vincent, you know, De Niro, De Niro, De Niro oh, sorry, De Niro, Frank Vincent, Joe Pesci. You either had, you even had uh, the real estate guy, what was his name? Uh, Pollock. Um, Oh, Kevin Pollock. Kevin Pollock was in it. I mean, Kevin Stone Pollock was in it. Alan King is James in it. Woods is in it. I mean, you just the, the list of actors is just amazing. So, I mean, that's... Love Casino. Yeah. Love Casino. Well, we got your number two. We already talked about Casino enough. So. Number two. Number two came out two years later after my last movie from 1974. It is, I will say, the best sequel ever made, I think is my argument, at least for me. It is The Godfather Part Two. And the best part about The Godfather Part Two is they split the movie in sides where you see a young Vito Corleone played by Robert De Niro, and then you see Al Pacino as his son going back and forth, and you see rise to power and total destruction of a human being. It is so gripping right. and so great, and The Godfather Part Two, it's the greatest sequel ever made for me. I think that is amazing. Well, I agree with you totally, and uh, everything's going to make sense when I drop this right now. But don't drop this right now. Okay. 
because before we drop number ones, let's talk about what didn't make the top ten. Yeah. What do you got on your list? I have. You got honorable. Mentions. Are we gonna do three? How many honorable mentions you want to do? List them all. Okay. So I have <clears throat> Road to Perdition, Juice. That movie, I mean, if everybody hasn't seen that movie, I'm with saying, Wesley I've Snipes, Tupac's in it, that's juice, a great man. movie. Uh, Once Upon a Time in America might have made my top ten if it wasn't so long. If you have four hours to waste, watch it. It's a great movie. It's a great cast. Um, and then I also had Bronx Tale. Oh, I love Bronx Tale. Uh, Gangs of New York. Donnie Brasco. I mean, I, I could go on and on. I mean, there's so many, but I mean, this this list is very hard to do. So. My my list of of almost on the things is Blow, The Irishman, Scarface, which we both talked about. Yeah, we talked we love about Scarface, it. Scarface, but, but it's, 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 it's so 80s. It's, it's, it's so, over. It's too over the top for me. Over the top. It's funny though. To me, today. Mob no. movies. I've got to toss in one of my favorites, New Jack City. Oh, there you. Ooh, I forgot about. It. See. Yeah, Road to Perdition, Eastern Promises, which is the go. Russian mob movie with uh, uh, Vito, uh, Vigo, Donnie Brasco, The Town, Hoffa, then Hoffa. a real deep cut we're going across the pond to Japan for Black Rain, Gangs of New York, Public Enemies, that's with Johnny Depp playing right. John Dillinger, Black Mass, the aforementioned with Johnny Depp, Carlito's Way, Legend, which is Tom Hardy right. playing the Cray Twins, Bugsy. Bugsy, ew, wow. That's, uh, yeah. but, Bugsy, like Bugsy was Bugsy, way down yeah. on my list on that. But uh, And my favorite Roger Corman movie next to Death Race 2000 is the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which is maybe not a great movie, but I love right, it. Right, 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 right. Great movies. With and then, yeah, and I have, you know, Hoodlum's in there for me, too. That was a great <laughs> film. Hoodlum was a great film as well. Um, you know, we've got Tim Roth as, uh, as Dutch. Yeah. As, uh, yeah, Dude, Schultz. Ooh, Ooh, was really good, and, you know. I mean, and we you already mentioned Snatch was on your list. That was another one on mine. I mean, I, we can go on and on about this, and I'm sure I've forgotten some. But it's just well, again, we like to do this on the womb, kind of. Exactly. Yeah, you know, I just this is a conversational piece. So, so number one. Okay. Number one coming. This is what I did, and a lot of people might not know this, but Godfather one and Godfather two was supposed to be one movie. And that's what I'm picking. So you're saying the Godfather the God, saga? Yeah, Godfather. Not, not three. Minus the third. The, now, three could get a little bit of an honorable mention, maybe. But it was just, it, it, the, the first two were so good. And then the, the other one was eh, at the end. You Godfather know. three doesn't get much love. No, it but I think it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, okay. I agree with the, the critics about it, but I still like it. But to this day, there's the opening scene to Godfather is just, um, I've never seen anything like it. Again, there's a couple of honorable mentions maybe there. I mean, the professional. That, oh, I love the professional. Yeah, the professional opening scene was really deep too. That could be on. That's an honorable mention too that we didn't bring. But back to one and two. But when you look at Godfather one and Godfather two, I've seen those movies uh, over a hundred times. Yeah. And I and I watched them once on because it was just so well. And that's what really made cinema and film. They were like the they they broke the ground with it and they went running with it and. When I went, when I studied theater at Fresno State, I was still amazed that people never saw The Godfather, and you are in the you want to be in the business of acting. Seriously, you know, and that really bothered I, we've me. We met a lot of young actors who haven't seen movies, movies of the past. Yes. And it's you've got to. I, I know it's a lot of homework. I know it's a lot of homework. But you got to watch, got to watch your craft. Yes, you have to, and especially know, with everything that you, you listen know. to a lot of music. Exactly, you exactly. Have to watch a lot of movies. Exactly. Go to, go to theater, do see things. Godfather one and two. I, I agree with that. Yeah, because it's supposed. No one knows that. It's supposed to be a one film. It'll be like six hours. <laughs> my number one, my favorite movie. We've already discussed it. Is Goodfellas, oh, and it is my favorite okay. Martin Scorsese movie. I knew I would have Godfather 1, 2, and Goodfellas. Those are going to be my top three, and I went between which is going to be which, but Goodfellas is so entertaining to me as a mob movie. Yeah. You root for them, and then you root for their decline, and then you watch them fall. I mean, it's the rise and fall of the American gangster. And uh, hey, you know a lot of people don't know Samuel Jackson was in that film. Uh, Stax. Yeah. Everybody loves Stax. He used to play guitar hey. by the bar. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, then when Samuel. his character gets whacked, he, the other guy's making a cup of coffee. We can take, take that the coffee, coffee to go. go. 
And he's, get the. <laughs> what did, what, nobody did. I'm the Wayne Seacock is doing a bank <laughs> jump. In the middle of the fucking weeds, lying down. Still this big prick comes up. Oh. Uh, you know what, Tommy, after doing everything on this today, and it's been so much fun, I just still think you should do a show all about your impressions. <laughs> but I, I, I do like four. I do like four impressions. Uh, you could do more. I'm sure you can. Yeah, I'm sure you can. So. That is 10 to 1. Um, we're going to put the be flashing up like that because uh, where are they going to find you, Joe? It's going to be posted right beneath you. Obviously, you are on the Compadres. Well, yeah, I am a co host of the Compadres. Uh, shout out to uh, Il Sun and uh, SB Press and the Compadres and, and Mash My Media as well. Okay. Um, you can find me at The Real Joe Rosati on the Instagram and then on YouTube, we have the Compadres. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, I mean, everywhere. So just. Uh, we appreciate you uh, reaching out and watching our stuff. And, hey, reach out to me all the time. DM me, whatever. We can talk. I'm always there. You ain't laughing. You ain't living. <laughs> We're going to post some stuff at the end like I always do of links. You can watch it. I'm going to post my compadre's uh, interview and episode Very and some other stuff like that. But come back and see us next time. I'll do another top ten list. We're going to talk about board games. We're going to talk about pop culture, movies, and all the nerdy stuff we love. And until I see you next time, as always, thank you to my guest, Joe Rich. Hey, I had a blast. And you know what? I'll be coming back on again. We, we got yes, some other are. stuff we can talk about. This was a yes. great time. Real fun. Till we see you next time. Peace, love, live long, and prosper. Have a good one. And I mean it.